Hey guys, thanks for joining us again this week. And uh, by now you're in your second week of being quarantined. And I hope that you're making the best use of your time. And uh, let me just encourage you and challenge you to stay tuned in with what's going on here. And uh, we're going to try to continue with these videos and um, with our Sunday school lessons and our live streamed services. So let me just let me challenge you to uh, stay tuned in, stay connected, and uh, don't lose any ground um, spiritually and what's going on here at the church. Uh, we're going to be in Romans chapter 1 today. And uh, last week we, we started off in Romans, but we started at the end of Romans. And uh, we, talked, uh, we talked about when God changes your plans. And uh, this week we're going to jump right in. And uh, I don't know how, how long we'll be doing this. Um, God knows. And uh, so we're just going to study through the book of Romans uh, as long as we have to. And um, today we're going to talk about when God conveys your purpose. When God conveys your purpose. And let me encourage you to, to have your Bible out and uh, to have a pen and something to write on. And uh, take some notes as we go through these things. And uh, God has really spoken to my heart studying through the book of Romans. And uh, there's some things that I believe that God wants me to share with you. And uh, so let's, let's read a couple verses here. We're going to talk about Paul and uh, when God conveyed his purpose in life. Verse number one of Romans chapter one says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Separated unto the gospel of God. I can't help but to think and to go back to Acts chapter nine when Paul was converted and uh, as soon as Paul was converted, he asked the Lord, he said, what wilt thou have me to do? And then we get here to, to Romans chapter 1, and we see that Paul is separated unto the gospel of God. Paul has found his purpose. Paul has, Paul has found what he is supposed to do. Uh, the first part of his life was lived for himself, was lived uh, persecuting the, the church and Christians. But when God got a hold of his life, when he, when he truly gave his life to the Lord and says, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want my purpose to be? And he finds it here in Romans chapter 1, separated unto the gospel of God. And that's what it's all about. That's, that's what our lives ought to be about. I tell, I tell you, our teenagers, often that you have one opportunity to give your life for something. You only have one chance to live for something. And so many give their life live, living for themselves and living for comfort, what makes them feel good, what they desire. Um, but as a Christian, our life ought to be lived unto God and for God and for the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The gospel is the message of Christ. And that's what, that's what we are to live for. And that ought to be our purpose, and that was Paul's purpose. Uh, but let's look down in verse number 14, and we're going to find a few things here about Paul's life um, that I think we need to apply to our own life. Verse 14, Paul said, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. Verse 15, so as much as, it, as in, is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Verse 16, one of my favorite verses, very familiar verse. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Paul gave his entire life, once, once he was converted, once he, got a hold of, uh, once he got a hold of the Lord, he gave his entire, the rest of his life for the gospel. And uh, the things that he did, all, all the, the things that he went through, the, the traveling, the persecution, uh, everything that Paul went through was for the gospel's sake. And that, that, that gospel is what we ought to live for today. He says, number one, we notice, he says, I am debtor. We notice his debt. Paul owed something because he was given something. When you're in debt, it's, uh, it, it's something that you have that you owe to someone. And Paul says in verse 14, the first thing that we see, he says, I am debtor. That word debt almost brings, uh, brings about the thought of a burden, something placed on you um, that you need to get off of you. And he is, he is burdened with the gospel. He, is bur he, has, uh, he has that debt of the gospel. Paul, uh, what, what I like about Paul's ministry is Paul never weighed the audience before he gave the gospel. Um, because he felt like he owed that to them. It didn't matter who Paul was speaking to. Uh, it didn't matter um, how many people Paul was speaking to. 
Paul always gave the gospel, and he didn't weigh the audience, should he or should he not. He just gave the gospel, and he was faithful to God. And that, uh, that's what we ought to do as Christians. Um, you know, it, it's, it's interesting um, in Paul's life, you know, sometimes we think, oh, well, this is for a certain person. This might be for the pastor. This might be for a preacher. Uh, maybe this is for adults. Maybe we think that's something that adults should, um, uh, should take seriously. But there is, no, uh, there is no teenage version of the gospel. There is no children's version of the gospel. Uh, there's no grown-up version of the gospel. It's just the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so even as a teenager listening to this lesson, um, you owe someone. You have a debt. You have a burden on your life, and you owe the gospel to someone. Well, what do we owe? Uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. That word necessity that word that's, that's laid on him, such as a burden, it's been laid on him that he must give it. It's a powerful message, power of God. Power is not found within ourselves, but it's found within the gospel. You think, oh, I don't have any abilities. I don't have the capability to give the gospel. Uh, you know, I can't speak to people. I don't really always know what to say. But it's not really about what we can or can't do. It's about who Jesus is and what he's already done. And our job is just to simply give the gospel and I'm just thinking, I mean, this is uh, this, this little time that God has given us to do all these videos. And um, there, are, there are churches all, you know, all across our world um, going live and shooting videos and how easy for, it, for, it, for you to share these videos with someone. And I mean, this should be right up your alley, the, the, the media age. You know, you've got your phone and you've got these videos and you can share it with your friends who may not be watching these videos and that's a good opportunity for you to share that gospel with someone. It's a powerful message. It's a purposeful message. Um, what does it do? Well, it brings about salvation. And um, some, somewhere along the way, if you received Christ, you received the gospel. And you heard the message of salvation. Uh, but let's not forget the person of the message, who it reveals. Um, again, it's not about our church. It's not about uh, our pastor. It's not about you or your pastor or our youth group. It's about Jesus Christ. And uh, that's the purpose. That's what we're here to do. And of course, who do we owe? We owe everyone. Uh, Paul said the Greeks, the barbarians, the wise, the unwise, uh, to, to you who are at Rome also, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Paul owed everyone the gospel. So we see his debt. Now we see his desire. Uh, we see his desire, verse 15, So as much as is in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome. His desire was to preach the gospel to everyone. That was his desire. That was his, uh, uh, and we see some, some boldness in that statement. He says, I'm ready. I'm ready to do, uh, to do whatever I need to do to get the gospel to the world. And that's what we see through Paul's life. We see that attitude of whatever I need to do, wherever I need to go, uh, we, we, we talked about last week about how he had some plans, but those plans were hindered. Um, but he was okay with that because he was ready to do whatever needed to be done to preach the gospel. I, I think when Paul preached, uh, when he preached the gospel at Jerusalem, he was mobbed. When he preached it at Athens, he was mocked. And then eventually he preached it at Rome, he was martyred. Um, but it didn't matter to Paul. He said, none of these things move me. Because it was all about the gospel. It was all about Jesus Christ and the power that is in the gospel. Uh, Paul was not worried about the consequences. We just see his boldness in, in, in the gospel. And uh, I can't help but think about Gideon's mighty men and uh, how some were ready and some were not. Some were uh, too busy uh, drinking the water and some were always prepared and ready to fight as they were drinking the water, but also looking up, looking for the enemy. And that's the type of Christians that we ought to be. Are you ready? Are you ready to give the gospel? I think we're at a, we're at a place in our church, uh, we're at a place in our world, in our country, um, where we need to be ready to give the gospel. There are people that are starting to um, ask questions. They're starting to, uh, to wonder and look for the answer and look for something, and we need to be ready to give the gospel. Listen, teenager, it's not about you, and it's not about what you can or can't do. It's about the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it's about that salvation, and we must be ready. We must have that, that warrior mentality. 
that mentality that is looking for someone, looking for an opportunity. Uh, just recently, uh, I, I had an opportunity to speak with someone who um, I've really been wanting to, to talk to, but never really had the opportunity to. And just the other day, I had an opportunity to, to speak with someone. And uh, it really, the only reason I had that opportunity is because of the situation that we're in now. And uh, we need to be looking for those opportunities. We need to be looking and be ready to give the gospel. Then number three, verse 16, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We see his dedication. We see his dedication. Um, when you're not ashamed of something, it's because you're sure of it. Uh, I, I think sometimes we are ashamed um, to call ourselves Christians or to say we go to this church or uh, to say uh, that we go to this school or uh, to even say that we're a Christian in general because we're just not sure about it all. We don't have all the answers. We're not sure. Let me encourage you to be sure. Let me encourage you to get in God's Word and find those truths, find the promises of God that you can stand on so that you can, like Paul, say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Right? And that, that's what it's all about. It's about, uh, it's about the gospel. We see the, the supremacy of the gospel. Uh, you know, you're not ashamed of something that you're 100% uh, is truth. Uh, you know, we, we are 100% sure that the, the Bible is right. And you don't have to be ashamed of it. You can proclaim it because it is truth, because it is right. Uh, we see the, the, su the sufficiency of the gospel. Um, listen, we don't need more uh, education. We don't need more religion. <clears throat> we don't need uh, new uh, ideas. We just need more of the gospel. We need more of God's word. And uh, God's word is sufficient. That's all we need. And, uh, you know, eventually we'll get to the place where uh, we understand in our Christian life that, that uh, we are fully equipped if all we have is the Bible. We are fully equipped if all we have is, is the Lord and His Spirit that indwells us. And we see the simplicity of the gospel. Um, it's to everyone that believeth. The message is simple, um, but it's going to take a great stand. And it's going to take some teenagers like you uh, who get serious about this thing, and who get serious about God's Word, who get serious about the Gospel. Paul was a servant of Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, and, and when you become a Christian, when you follow Christ, you're okay with being enslaved to God. You're okay with, with doing whatever God wants you to do. That's the type of Christian teenagers that we need. We need more Christian teenagers who are going to stand up and say, whatever I can do, whatever I can do for the Gospel, Whoever I can reach for the gospel, Paul was separated unto the gospel of God. It wasn't just about what Paul had going on. It wasn't about his plans. It wasn't about his agenda. It was just about the gospel of God. And I want to encourage you, teenager, to get a hold of this truth. I want to encourage you to get in the book of Romans and to read as we study through the book of Romans. Next week's lesson, Lord willing, uh, is a very important lesson. A very important lesson and a very uh, important opportunity for you to share with the world. We're going to talk about salvation and what Paul tells us about being justified and the forgiveness of our sins. And uh, so I want you to read through the book of Romans. I want you to pray about these things. And I want you to stand up for what's right and stand up for the gospel. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you so much for Jesus Christ. Thank you for equipping us with the gospel, with, uh, with your word. I pray that you would help us as Christians, help these teenagers uh, to stand in this difficult day and to stand up for truth, to stand up for right. And I pray that you would just help us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with a lost and dying world. In your name we pray. Amen.